Good day, class. And welcome to uh, part two of uh, chapter three. We shall talk about alternative and facultative obligations. So this is the statutory definition of an alternative obligation. Under Article 1199, a person alternatively bound by different prestations shall completely perform one of them. Uh, the creditor cannot be compelled to receive part of one and part of the other undertaking. So class, by now, you should know what a prestation means. Right? The prestation also means the object. Right? The meaning of uh, alternative obligation. Various prestations are due. The performance of one of them is sufficient. Uh, the general rule is the choice belongs to the debtor. Example, uh, delivery of 10,000 pesos or the color TV set or painting the house of C, the performance of one must be complete. So in this scenario class, no, parang ganito, uh, I promise to give you either uh, 10,000 pesos or the color TV set or I will paint your house. So, ilan yung prestations dito? Tatlo. Okay? Pero, isa lang yung gagawin. Pag ganyan, it, it's an alternative obligation. The choice, as a general rule, belongs to the debtor. Pipili dito yung debtor kung ano yung gagawin niya. Okay? Hindi siya pwedeng pilitin na gawin uh, yung part of each. No? Hindi pwedeng pilitin na isang 5,000 pesos, kalahati ng TV, or kalahati lang ng bahay yung pipinturahan. No? Eh, kung yun yung agreement nila, eh di okay lang naman. But in a legal sense, no? uh, in an alternative obligation, the performance of one is sufficient and it must be complete. Okay? And the general rule, the right to choose the prestation belongs to the debtor. The exception is when it is expressly granted to the creditor by common agreement. So kapag pumayag yung parties na creditor yung mamimili, okay lang yun. So uh, limitations to the right of choice of the debtor. The debtor cannot choose the prestations which are impossible, unlawful, or could not have been the object of the prestation. So uh, if there is only one prestation which is practicable, then hindi na alternative obligation. It becomes a simple obligation. So the communication of notice that a choice has been made. So if we follow the general rule, yung debtor dapat i-communicate na yung choice niya sa creditor kung ano yung gagawin niya. So until the choice is made and communicated, the obligation remains alternative. Once the notice of election has been given to the creditor, the obligation becomes simple. Once the choice is made and communicated, it becomes irrevocable and cannot be changed without mutual consent of the parties. So meaning class, no? Kapag namili na yung debtor, kung ano yung prestation na gagawin niya, dapat yun na yun. Hindi pwede magbago ng isip, hindi pwede magbawi, unless pumayag si creditor. Alright? What is the effect when only one prestation is practicable? The obligation is converted into a simple obligation. Example, all other prestations become impossible and only one prestation remains. What is the effect if one of the prestations is destroyed by the creditor? So dito class, no? creditor, creditor yung, yung sumira ng isang uh, prestation. Uh, these are the remedies of the debtor. The debtor may rescind the contract kasi siya yung may right of choice. Eh. Bakit siya sisirain? Yung creditor. The debtor may receive the contract. He must return whatever he received, if any, with interest. In return, the creditor must pay the value of the destroyed prestation with damages. Or number two, the debtor may choose to perform another prestation with a right to re recover the value of uh, the item that was destroyed by the creditor with damages. Number three, the debtor may choose the item destroyed by the creditor. Kung so kung ano yung sinira, yun yung pwede piliin ng debtor. In that case, the obligation is already extinguished. 
and the creditor is no longer liable for damages. So class tatlo yung remedies ha, in case ang creditor ang sumira ng isa sa mga prestations. Alright? So take note class. Okay, huwag kayong malilito. Dito, yung creditor ang sumira sa prestation, sa isa sa mga prestations. And these are the available remedies of the debtor. Okay? Pwede i-cancel ng debtor yung, ano, yung uh, contract. Okay? Tapos he can ask for uh, damages. Pabayaran ng creditor yung, ano, yung uh, value ng uh, destroyed prestation with damages. So, number two, pwede kumili yung uh, debtor ng, ano, ng uh, ibang prestation. Okay? At tapos may right pa siya to recover the value of the item uh, destroyed by the creditor with damages. Okay? Or number three, extinguish na agad yung obligation kapag piliin ng debtor. Kasi pwede nyo na piliin niya eh, yung sinirang uh, prestation ng creditor. <clears throat> okay? So this is, this is if one of the prestations is destroyed by the creditor. What, uh, the effect of loss of objects when the right of choice belongs to the debtor? If only some of the objects are lost or destroyed, the debtor is not liable even if the objects are destroyed through his fault because the obligation can still be performed. So class, interesting, no? Dito, in this case, what if nawala yung isa sa mga prestations o kaya sinira ng debtor mismo, sinira ng debtor yung mga prestations. Pero meron pa natitirang isang prestation. May pananagutan ba yung debtor? Is he liable for damages? The answer is no. Okay? Basta may natitira pang ibang prestation or may natitira kahit isa na prestation. The debtor is not liable for damages. Okay? So balikan natin itong example class, no? Yung merong TV. So ito, 10,000 pesos or yung color TV or painting the house of C. What if, what if class, naging impossible na, let's say sinira ng debtor yung ano yung uh, yung color tv no so in that case is the debtor liable for damages the answer is no because may dalawa may dalawa pang prestation the delivery of 10000 pesos or painting the house of c okay then balik tayo natin what if ang sumira ng gamit ay si creditor what if si C yung sumira ng tv in that case class Eh dito tayo pupunta sa uh, ano sa remedies ng debtor. The debtor may uh, pinili ng debtor is yung sira ng TV. The obligation is already extinguished. The creditor is not liable for damages. Or pwedeng i-cancel ni debtor yung contract. Tas liable si creditor for damages. Or si debtor pwedeng niya gawin yung pagpaint ng house or pag-deliver ng 10,000 pesos plus he can also ask for damages from the creditor. Okay. Pero in this case, no, if uh if ang sumira ay yung debtor, tapos may natitira pang isang prestation, the debtor is not liable because the obligation can still be performed. So the class, what if all of the objects are lost or destroyed? Okay? So class, ito ibahin na natin. Lahat ng bagay na sira na. If the last item is destroyed through the debtor's fault, he is liable for damages if the last item. Huh? So, paano kapag sinira ng debtor lahat ng prestations? Eh, he's liable for damages. He is liable for damages because lahat sinira niya through his own fault. What if, ito class, what if, let's say, lima yung prestation. Yung apat, sinira ng debtor. May isa natitira. Is he liable for damages? No. Because may isa pa natitira ang prestation. What if yung apat na prestation uh, nasira na for Twitter's event, tapos yung last item, sinira ng debtor, is he liable for damages? The answer is yes, he is liable for damages. O, palta naman natin. Let's say lima yung prestation. Yung apat, sinira ng debtor. Okay? Is he liable for damages? No, because may isa pa natitira. Okay? Tapos yung last item, nasira because of for Twitter's event. Is the debtor liable for damages? No. Because nasira yung ano, through fortuitous event, yung last item, without the fault of the debtor. Okay? 
So you will always look at the last item. So if the last item is destroyed through fortuitous event, the debtor is not liable. The obligation is extinguished subject to exceptions. Uh, indemnity shall be fixed, taking as a basis the value of the last item of the, or the last thing which disappeared. All right? Kapag, uh, kapag sinira ng debtor. What if when the right of choice belongs to the creditor? So iba yung rules class, no? Kapag uh, yung right of choice nasa creditor. So we follow these uh, rules. Rules in case of loss before the creditor has made the choice. Okay? When a thing is lost through a fortuitous event, the creditor may choose from the remainder or that which remains. Okay? So may pagpipilihan pa yung creditor. Number two, when a thing is lost through the debtor's fault, the creditor may choose from the remainder with right to damages or the price of the lost item also with right to damages. Okay? So dito class, ibahin natin. Kasi dito ang right of choice nasa creditor. Yung kanina nasa debtor. So pwede mamili yung uh, creditor from the remaining prestations with right to damages or pwede rin yung piliin yung price, yung equivalent price ng uh, nasirang prestation but also with the right to damages. What if all things are lost through the debtor's fault? The creditor can demand payment of the price of any one of them with a right to indemnity for damages. Okay? So let's say sinira lahat ng debtor, lahat ng prestations. So dito, pipili, pipili dito yung creditor kung ano yung, ano, kung ano yung gusto niya na prestation tapos with right to damages. So syempre dahil sinira niya yung prestation, hindi yung prestation mismo. But he can demand payment of the price of the destroyed prestation. Number four, when all things are lost through a fortuitous event, the obligation shall be extinguished. Okay? Let's go now to a facultative obligation where only one prestation is due, but it has, uh, it has been agreed upon that the obligor may render another in substitution. So class, what is the difference between a facultative obligation and, uh, and an alternative obligation? So class, nasa alternative obligation, maraming prestations. Tapos, pipili pa lang yung debtor or yung creditor as the case may be. Dito sa facultative obligation, the right of uh, choosing the substitution, it always belongs to the debtor. Hindi mo yan pwede ibigay sa creditor. Alright? So sa facultative obligation, there is really only one prestation due. Isa lang. Pero, may ang agreement ng parties, pwede siya paltan. Pwede siya isubstitute. Alright? The obligor may render another in substitution. So the right of choice here belongs to the debtor only. Okay? So this is a facultative obligation. Pwede isubstitute. So kung hindi in-exercise yung, sub yung substitution, talagang due yung, uh, ano, yung main prestation. So effect of loss. Before the substitution, if the principal thing is lost through a fortuitous event, the obligation is extinguished. All right, class? If the principal thing is lost through the debtor's fault, the debtor is liable. So ito, no, before the substitution, if substitute is lost, with or without the debtor's fault, the debtor is not liable. Okay? Kasi hindi pa na effect yung substitution, remember, meron lang isang, ano, meron lang, meron isang main uh, prestation. Unless magkaroon ng uh, substitution, hindi papansinin kung ano yung substitute. So number two, after the substitution, if the substitute thing is lost to a fortuitous event, the obligation is extinguished. If the substitute thing is lost through the debtor's fault, the debtor is liable. Kasi after substitution na, na-communicate na yung debtor na gusto niya mag-substitution. If the principal thing is lost with or without the debtor's fault, the debtor is not liable. Okay? Kasi may substitution na. So yung substitute, it now becomes the prestation and not the principal thing. 
Okay, uh, let's end the video today. We will talk about joint obligations in the next video. Take care and God bless.